It is a quarter now before the hour. He is TV's big man on campus. She is the school's sensitive newspaper editor. Together, Luke Perry and Gabrielle Carteris rate an A-plus from the zillions of teens tuned in to Beverly Hills 90210. It features perhaps the most closely knit group of high schoolers ever. Perhaps not. Well, they may not have traveled to Mexico, but Luke Perry and Gabrielle Carteris are here in New York City. <laughs> Yesterday, they helped choose the winner in a contest for truly extraordinary teenagers. That winner is going to join us in a few moments, but first, we have a chance uh, to chat with them a bit. It's good to have you here. I use the number zillions of teenagers watching. That's an absolute established fact. We took that right <laughs> out of the range. It, it is It is zillions, <laughs> yes. When, when we visited you on the set out yeah. there, the show was really... At that time, you guys were all on the cover of everything at the time. Has it continued? Has it stayed that Well, intense? no. I think that appearance on Good Morning America sort of put us over the top. Right. And it's been downhill ever since. I think now, actually, they're trying to modify it a little bit. There's, you know, there's that fear that you don't want to overexpose. Yeah. But there's still, I think, a lot going on right now. The show's been doing well. We have our new season starting next Wednesday, so God knows. Now. Well, that's interesting. You're going to go with first-run episodes again through the summer. Yeah. They want the whole summer. Yeah, that's when you really have that audience because the kids are out of school, etc. Mm -hmm. But I, I understand that you do get still very extreme reactions. Was it recently that you got mobbed at some uh, uh, New Jersey shopping mall or something? Oh, God. Well, that was really unexpected. They had, uh, I think they only expected maybe a couple hundred and it turned out to be 10,000. It was a lot. It's um, something that, I mean, Luke has experienced it in a much bigger way than I have, but it's something that's so unexpected. I was, we were talking the other day, it's almost as if you say, I'm, I'm still the same person I was uh, two years ago, and yet people react to you and look at you as if you're something that's outside of reality. And yeah. it's, Do you have any sense yet why, why, why it gets this kind of reaction? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I mean, you know, I, I really wish I had a... a concise, informative answer that I could give you, but I don't. Um, you never know. I mean, television's a dicey thing. You never know what's going to work and what's not going to. We've just been real fortunate that things have gone in our favor, yeah. yeah. What would you be doing if you weren't doing this? Do you have any sense? I mean, if you weren't an actor, Oh. if you weren't in this business, do you have any sense what you'd, what you'd be doing? Because yeah. you get such reactions in this, and I, and I wonder if it's comparable in anything else that you could oh. do. I'd be a fireman. There's would you? Yeah. I, I would be a, probably a therapist or a, I don't know. There's so many things, you know, that are out there that I'd want to try writing or um, psychology. I want to put out fires. Right? fires. You'd be good at that. <laughs> yeah. Best wishes are due to you. It was, it was just a couple of months ago yes. that you uh, got married and they yes. all showed up, right? The whole They're cast? They were there. Yeah, it was was it was it like a wedding or was it like an episode? Oh please, no. <laughs> Thank you. An episode is written. No, the um, wedding for me was really a very special time. We didn't allow uh, press that we really wanted it to be something that was private and the people we loved were there. Well, I got such a sense of the way all of you interact when I was out on the set. Did they give you trouble? that day? Oh, they were throwing water balloons. No, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was trying to videotape the thing, you know, and I kept, <laughs> it kept shutting off on me, so. I went and I saw the video that Luke did, and half of it, just as I'm walking down the aisle, it goes black. Yeah. <laughs> just like... well, I'm not much of a camera man. <laughs> better people, uh, better That's that other right. people run the That's cameras right. on the show. Better that right. Luke is in front of the camera instead of behind the camera. Well, I know you're involved in a very extraordinary program here, and you mm -hmm. helped choose mm -hmm. the winner of an extraordinary teenager program. We're going to bring the winner in, I want you to introduce him when he comes, and we're mm -hmm. going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. And Luke and Gabrielle will introduce us to a teen who has made a difference when we continue. Nine before the hour. Now, teenagers get a lot of criticism these days, but a recent Gallup poll reports that 58% of all teens do volunteer work, donating nearly three million hours a year to help improve the environment, education, health, other causes. The Noxima Extraordinary Teen Awards program was designed to spotlight those teens. And yesterday here in New York City, Luke Perry, and Gabrielle Carteris of Beverly Hills 90210 honored its latest recipient, 18-year-old John Keats from Illinois, for his work on behalf of AIDS causes. And John is joining me now, along with Luke and Gabrielle. And before I get to John, I should let you explain what he does that made you and others choose him. You go, for <laughs> you go get him. Uh, John Keats uh, started the John Keats Foundation. Uh, it's an organization to help raise money for AIDS research and education. Last year, they did their first march. They made forty thousand dollars, twenty thousand of which went to research, and twenty thousand which went towards the education. He goes to speak uh, to elementary schools as well as high schools and colleges. And I gather this thing, John, is sort of growing and growing, right? 
Definitely, and we're doing it again this year. It's going to be an annual thing, so um, we've got a lot of people there in the community that are backing it up. Um, all my friends and my family that helped get me through it, they're all there behind me. Were you aware that the mayor of your town and a lot of others had nominated you for this award? Really, to tell you the truth, I wasn't even aware that I was nominated for it in the first place. And um, one of my friends and I had slipped a little and kind of let it get out. And then I found out that I was nominated and that I was going to New York. And I didn't know exactly who nominated me until I think about a couple weeks before I came here. Now, now you got AIDS at the age of what, 11? Is that well, right? Well, we don't know. If that's when I got it. I um, was diagnosed in September of 89. But they guessed that because that's when you were getting blood transfusions? or Yeah, because I don't know when I contracted it. I know I was diagnosed in September of 89. When I contracted it, I really don't have any idea because it can be in your blood for nine years and you may not know you it. I've had a number of blood transfusions over the years. Right. Now you go to school groups, talk to them, as Gabrielle mentioned, a lot right. of this money uh, goes Churches to... Churches and nursing homes and whatever. What do you say? What is it that you want to get across when you go and speak? Um, and, what, and specifically, what kind of message can you get across and what kind of message can shows uh, like Luke and Gabrielle's get across. I just want to get across the message in that um, a lot of kids, you know, they think it can't happen to them, and that's not true. It can, and I just I want to get that message across, and I want to get across the message and tell them, you know, to be safe in that, you know, because it, it's happened to Magic Johnson, and look at him. I mean, he's supposedly supposed to be magic, and it happened to him, right? So I mean, if it happened to him, it can happen to anybody, and then I just want people to, you know, open up and that. I know um, sometimes they get tired of hearing about it because it's kind of old news, <clears throat> old news or whatever, but it's... Do you find that many of them, though, away. actually worry do about it? Do we do something about it? Do they really do something about it? Do they worry about it, do you find? I think 80% of them do, and then there's another 20% that's not sure yet, or they just don't know about it, because there's still a few rumors that go around, but it's mostly like 80% of them are behind me. Well, congratulations to you. It's a terrific award. Thanks. Delighted you won it, and good luck with this. Uh, <laughs> with this. Were either of you extraordinary teenagers? Nope. <laughs> We're I, was to be extraordinarily extraordinarily I was extraordinarily lucky to live through my teenage years. I think it's really, I have to tell you, uh, yesterday meeting the contestants and last year also, that uh, they really are extraordinary teens and examples for all of us. We were talking yesterday about the fact that it's not only an inspiration for young people, but hopefully for all the adults out there. These people are coming out saying they, they see a need for change. And they're going out and making a difference. And John, a very good example of that. Congratulations to you. Luke and Gabrielle, thank you, thank you for thank being you. here. Thank you, John. It's five Thanks. before the hour. We'll continue in just a moment.